And then recently we had a boom, and uh, let's go through this. In uh, 1780, uh, the first that had a clue about things that were with electricity and our body was uh, Galvani. Uh, he was making an experiment with, bra with um, uh, frogs, and he discovered that that frog, uh, um, you can move a body of that frog uh, using electricity. Yeah, there is a really, then it started really from there. From there, like we got then, so a nervous system that it, it, it moves with electricity, electricity and uh, magnetic fields are overlapped. Uh, what about the brain? There is a nice um, uh, scene in AT, the movie from Steven Spielberg. They are in the labs and they are playing with frogs and there is like, this telepathy on going on with, between the alien and the little boy of the movie. Anyway, out of records. So yes, galvanics, uh, bioelectric magnetics, 1880. Uh, then uh, it was in 1875 that um, there was proof that the brain was also having like a uh, uh, that electricity was having a, a big uh, role play in uh, in the brain as well. So, yeah, he basically discovered the electrical nature of the brain. But we need to wait for Hans Berger to discover the alpha waves. Before uh, we uh, read the alpha wave, we, we were able to read the alpha waves of, uh, of the brain. Uh, we need to uh, sense them. We need like some kind of uh, reading machine for that. The first reading machine that was uh, reading uh, electricity out of the brain was invented in 1994 uh, by Angelo Musso. It, is co it, is called, it was called human circulation balance because he discovered the, um, the link between uh, uh, blood activity and brain activity. So. Uh, abstracting from electricity and fields, just about we read where uh, which part of the brain has uh, blood activity the most, and we can deduct that there is a brain activity and going there. Um, yeah, it's kind of archetype of MRI and PET. Uh, then finally, Hans Berger, uh, German, um, German say a neuroscientist, but um, it discovered the alpha waves uh, at the beginning called the Berger wave. It's basically the most simple uh, wave, the most strongest wave, electrical wave that can be spotted by, um, by uh, yeah, tools um, that can measure the voltage ongoing on uh, in our cranium. So uh, with simple, I won't say simple, but yeah, with some machines, it was about it was um, able to uh, read uh, brain activity. So, what is a what is a wave? Basically, we have um, things are going on uh, between neurons. These neurons fire; um, uh, th their activity consists uh, in firing. Uh, that means that they uh, send messages one each other using electricity. When that happens. So there is some kind of uh, electric field that is going go with some power voltage in different area. If we uh, we can uh, we are able to to measure that is when you uh, we put a screwdriver uh, with a lead into the the plug and we see that the lead switch on is more or less the same. Is is electricity is basically if we take uh, if there is electricity we connect something the electricity will pass through that. If we can then can measure the signal that is passing through the wire that we connected, then we know uh, how, how much power there is in that part of the brain. So if we put a, connect a, bi a wire here on the skin, and then we measure uh, what's going on, what the electricity that comes out from here, we are able like, to see, to measure it, to measure this part of the brain activity from an electrical point of view. There are also a little, um, for going, moving on, um, Nice things about Hans Berger, one of those uh, coincidences or dark swarm that happened. Um, he was uh, in the military and then uh, he had an incident. Uh, 
nothing terrible, but he had big uh, pay, uh, big uh, shock. Uh, his sister, uh, miles away, uh, had an impression, had a feeling, so convinced his fa uh, her father to write a letter to him, like, what's happening? Are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. He just had a bad incident uh, while he was doing a training uh, with the military. So it, is, it was like kind of how the brain works, how is possible that my sister so far in, in space ca could like re had a sensation about my experience. So he decided to, to study the brain and then he started like uh, to dig into it and eventually became, uh, yeah. Um, it discovered the alpha waves is the first. Um, after that, uh, it was hired by the Nazis and he committed suicide. Probably he spotted something what's about like how this can be used as well. Then we need to wait for uh, 1964 when uh, to wait for a new version of Burger's machine uh, that was able like to detect more than just alpha waves and with a big higher resolution. So. Uh, like the computer, they, it got smaller and more efficient, and it was with a special headset. They were it was able to spot uh, more than just alpha waves, also beta waves and uh, theta waves. Um, these uh, different names um, are um, uh, referred to different frequencies. So, if this is a frequent, this might be another fr uh, frequency. It's uh, basically how uh, many times the wave goes up and down per second, per, per time unit. Uh, while we sleep, we are, there are more uh, um, smoother waves. While we are active, there are more, uh, more uh, high frequencies on going on. Um, it was also inspiring uh, many other people at that time. Uh, I wrote a book called uh, The Living Brain. It was in this book, uh, it was mm, the first one that was like putting from an our science point of view, a big a kind of difference between the brain and the mind as two different entities. Uh, this book inspired um, the inventor of the dream machines that were used by um, Barrocks, one was one writer that was using it. It's it's uh, the, the the thing. The, the principle is this one: if we have frequencies, waves, on, in this case electrical, in our brain, can we uh, stimulate these uh, frequencies with uh, other frequencies? So, uh, if I, um, in this case, if I look at this uh, light that switch on and off with a certain frequency, I can. Um, induct my um, uh, brain activity waves into a certain state of frequencies. And so I can modify, it's like taking drugs, I can modify uh, what's going on in my brain. I can relax myself, I can do other things. Um, of course, this inspired not only big men's, but also, yeah, commercial applications. Um, for example, this is a tool, so you listen to music according to the music. Oh, this is so annoying. Sorry. Uh, according to the music, the, they make you listen also a, a special frequency that drives your brain to, to go to a special uh, state. Uh, but I don't know if anybody heard about this. It was uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the Russian um, um, uh, enabled their um, carrier uh, with uh, this light, uh, with this beam. So basically, it's a light beam uh, that uh, brings people to vomit or to have nausea or to have hallucinations. It's just like it's a light, but the principle is the same. So instead of driving you to nice and uh, relaxed uh, uh, mind state, it drives you to exactly the opposite. Um, also, the guy, Walter, uh, the one that um, uh, built a burger better version uh, of the um, uh, Brave Sensoring uh, helmet, uh, also uh, recognized this little problem in the sense that when we are about to have a um, uh, decision or let's say a, uh, an act of cognition, well, that is uh, present in our brain some uh, moments before. So let's say I want, I decide, I have, I decide to, I have one bot, two buttons, and uh, I'm asked like to push one or the other one. And uh, when I am about to decide to push the right one, for example, uh, well, my brain has elaborated that before I am aware of it. So this 
put some uh, question about uh, uh, free will, of course. Um, yeah. Now we need like to, in order to make the things a bit uh, consistent, because I would like to pass not only things about BCIs, but also to give a context where this has born and how, uh, uh, why the trillions of money are in there. Um, in, uh, yeah, in, at the end of the 60s, uh, this guy, Jay uh, Litlicker, uh, was a uh, leak later, uh, was um, first director of DARPA. Uh, he had uh, a behavioral science uh, background and also, um, yes, and also psychoacoustic. Well, it's more interesting. Uh, the psychoscience, the psycho, the behavioral uh, psychology background. Um, he had the idea of internet. Basically, he was the the one that said, "Okay, we can do this. We it would be like amazing to have it." Um, he was the first director. He pushed the idea. He was like the one that uh, basically forecast and had the vision about the internet. For him, it was a galactic network of things and entities interconnected one each other. He wrote also a book called My Computer Symbiosis. So that's not the cover he had in mind for it. But um, all the concept that um, man, let's say the, the, the almost totality of the concept that uh, it's heard about uh, uh, transhumanist minds, it's already as the seeds in that book. 99% of them. Um, he was thinking the human computer symbiosis as a, as a, not in the term of singularity, but more in the terms of uh, augmented intelligence. So the computer as a symbiosis for, uh, this is our point of view. Then we, we can guess which is the computer point of view, which would be a symbiosis for digital life. Anyway. So yes, uh, he had like uh, he wanted like he, he, he came from a project called um, um, uh, Regate. Well, it was about like Sage. Uh, it was about um, a lot of radars uh, in all in many parts of the, the world. They and then uh, a, a user interface that uh, brings all the information on to a user. So like to have an vision. Uh, on the battlefield, but yes, of course, it was like uh, he may he became the head of uh, information uh, of um, the control program at DARPA. I mean, we are talking about people that uh, like not really an uh, EP background. We are talking about people that uh, look forward, uh, yeah, let's say discipline and order and control for sure. Um, In, uh, so basically in, in 96, uh, the first uh, internet was shipped to, to UCLA, that is uh, un um, uh, the University of California. And uh, they started like to send me, this was a picture of the first uh, moment in which one the messenger was going through between the, the military facility and the UCLA and then from UCLA to Stanford, if I'm not wrong. But uh, so 1969, he just had an idea. He just found the. He just became the director of the, one of the most important agency in the world for what's uh, concerning technologies. Uh, we know how DARPA was born uh, after the Sputnik, before NASA. They had wanted like an agency for a high risk, high value thing. So, even if it's mad science, uh, let's put money there because it will be strategic for the future. That's DARPA. It was it, at that time, internet was still a military thing. This was the vision he had, more or less. Now, uh, going back to the break computer interfaces, Jacques Vidal, 1971, uh, was the one that worked, made important steps on BCI. It was, um, first of all, invented the term uh, brain computer interfaces. Um, it's this guy, this is uh, at one meeting in Praga. These are all Russians. Uh, yeah, in 69, he had a research grant from DARPA at UCLA that 
coincidentally, was also the spot for the first internet node. So we have like a, a, a man, lead liker, that has a vision from one part uh, computer networks, on the other side humans. Computer human symbiosis. The first part went really fast, really well. We all used the internet. Uh, the second part had more complication, let's say, but they started the, the two uh, endpoints of the project at the same time with the same uh, aim, let's say, with the same enthusiasm and spirit. Yes. This is what we can see. So there is like, uh, this is internet. So it was like born as an idea there, and then it was translated to, okay, at this point we are still doing uh, yes, we have it in the university and college, but it's still a military thing. No, but I mean, it's like you you want to play with the internet, you you are you have to sign up a couple of things uh, that are not commercial commercial related. And then no, it became we. What I would like to do is to guess like uh, what happened to the other part of the game of the or the other endpoints, like the other side of the project that is the brain net. So we were there and. We are seeing things now, no? So we are seeing like the military funding a lot of project about uh, neuroscience. For me, it's more a deployment than just where, but I don't want to go there. Um, in 2017, so there was this um, brain internet is not concept of mine. And uh, the word is really nice. It was uh, um, invented by this uh, professor in uh, South Africa, Adan. Patanovitz, uh, is streamed uh, over internet uh, EGG things. And uh, on the other side, there was another guy. There are many experiments about this. Um, um, it's possible also to, to write uh, waves, or let's say mental states, as we, as we said already. So let's say uh, there are many experiments that have been made in this sense. So for example, the firing experiment, when I fire the, uh, on a video game, uh, I don't fire. Um, my signal is uh, transmitted through internet. On the other side, in Japan, let's say, there is a guy uh, that has the reverse of a reading machine. He has like a, a, a TMS, a magnetic um, device, for example, that irradiates uh, uh, magnetic fields in a specific location. And I, in Japan, as a receiver, know because I feel it in my mind that I have to fire. So I will fire the video games and eventually the, uh, the astro um, ship will be hit, uh, hit. So it's kind of in this collaborative, uh, this was one of the experiments that has been made. So just uh, transmitting uh, tr triggers and uh, simple thoughts like let's fire, but we can go a lot yeah, uh, so what happened? That uh, Vidal basically was able already in 1974 to move a, uh, to move a cursor on a computer or to, to prove that that was possible. It's way be, like before uh, the news that we know. Now, what happened? Yes, so we are still, we are still here, okay? We are still here. We are able already to move cursors on the computer. We are able to do pretty cool stuff already. Uh, what I, yeah. Finally, in uh, 87, um, yeah, this uh, guy, Phil Kennedy, it's called also the Indiana Jones of uh, the brain computer interface. It flowed through, recently flowed to, to, he flowed to Belize and he asked for a, illegal brain surgery implants because he wanted to experiment his own idea about uh, about language. He's also the founder of neural signals. He's uh, also, it was one of the mind behind uh, BrainGate that is, uh, uh, there are, when, um, when we, uh, when we approach like this matter, we we'll see that there are many people that work together and then they got connected and then they split and then there are some facilities that are the same and then they got money from the same people. It's, uh, it's just like a community and uh, they are, they're doing this, but, uh, yes, we need to, at the moment we are only, 
we are in the field of uh, con reading signals and having triggers. Like uh, so, something happened, and I send out uh, an output, and then there is uh, something that is about that that happened with the output. So I fire something, I move the cursor. Um, it is in uh, 1995 when um, it uh, started to be clear that we could also detect co cognition. Cognition means intentions, means uh, emotions, means uh, means uh, basically uh, our key to the universe as a human being. Since we are, we're not, we will, yeah. So. Going through cognitive neuroscience, then uh, 2001, uh, the first article that was digging into it, and in 2006, uh, it was uh, proved that we can uh, go really far, far in uh, the coding mental states. So uh, John Dylan Heinz, uh, Max Planck Institute uh, in Germany. He um, basically he asked uh, the same question: Will you switch on the red uh, or the left buttons? And he had uh, amazing, amazing uh, results. He was able to detect the intentions ten seconds before the user would eventually know that he had a cho he, he made a choice. So I decide I'm decide for beers or coke, and uh, ten seconds before I'm aware of my decision. My my mind, has already, my brain has, is already there. So this puts a little bit more. Cons so after after he discovered that, he made a lot more experiments, and then he started going around the world, making speech about ethical issues. Of course, basic what we do today is that then we plug uh, artificial intelligence into the into the thing, and uh, what's happening. It's happening that we can recognize pattern a lot better. So we have like all these uh, waves that are going on on different frequencies, and uh, now we can classify them really well. So we can really, well, from a bunch of cows and uh, data, we are really able to say, okay, you're thinking about a cat now. You are, you're feeling like happy or. Um, The coding, narrow the coding. So, a shoes, brain, the computer algorithm, map into this because it reads basically what what's going on here, and uh, then there is uh, um, we translate the waves into an image that's uh, easily done, and uh, and then the computer will look over thousands and thousands of image, uh, images and classify them. So, when a shoes like that is seen, and then it's closer to this one. So this correspond, this correspond, this correspond, this correspond. Everything corresponds, but this, this is different. But yeah, with a certain degree, we can say that this is more a shoes than a cat. This is the decoding. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, ten seconds before the hourness was possible. Then we go also, let's see what about the language. There are two approaches for the language. Uh, let's see first the toughest, uh, the one that involves semantics uh, decoding. So um, in 2008, uh, 2008 was a really special year, 2008, 2009. Uh, Michael, Marcel Just and Tom Mitchell at the Carnegie Mellon University, they were able to um, deduct. Uh, let's say uh, ask a computer what you were thinking, if you were thinking of a hammer of a, or a mm, screwdriver, and uh, the computer would answer with uh, almost 99% of uh, precision what you were thinking at, the word that you were thinking at. Of course, a car or a screwdriver is in different in this, it's in many places. Uh, they worked uh, with the Intel, uh, so we need a really uh, strong um, um, decoding uh, abilities and skills. That is possible with uh, a lot of compute computational power. 
And uh, he achieved that. And, and Carnegie Mellon University, there is also the Intel Advanced Research Lab. His director is, uh, again, an ex, uh, an ex uh, DARPA director. Uh, I say again because, uh, yeah, anyway, um, we'll see it later. And yes, thanks to like uh, some uh, founding, uh, they were able like to come with uh, this uh, goal. Uh, a few years later, in 2017, the same guy published like the Going Beyond Bananas. Interesting title. They were able to mind read complex thoughts like phrases and also to forecast what the user would, uh, what the user, what the person would have uh, told after, uh, like. They are, uh, it's possible to read uh, uh, bef uh, ahead of the awareness, so it's possible like to guess what a person is about to say. Um, interest this time they were backed up by Yarpa. Uh, they are really focused in uh, forecasting. Um, Yarpa is the arm, while well, uh, Darpa is the armed arm uh, research uh, arm of uh, DoD. Um, um, the Department of Defense, uh, Yarpa is more is a creature of the Office uh, of Director of uh, National Intelligence. It's kind of centralized office that was wanted by that guy after 1911 to have like one common spike in the White House to foresee uh, all the activities of the uh, intelligence agency. And Yarpa is their uh, research, uh, advanced research uh, part of that. Anyway. Uh, yes, if we go, on, I say like um, we, we, we cross uh, directors. At that time, um, uh, in 2008, so with the first uh, micro, Mars, Mars Adjust research, uh, DARPA was also financing a project, well, financing that uh, thing, so screwdrivers and so guessing words basically, because they wanted. Uh, with the for me, uh, they wanted to uh, have uh, telepathic communication on, f on the battlefield between uh, soldiers. So uh, in order to do that, uh, they need like some uh, prototype, prototypization, and I think Kurdish Mellon University, uh, to be, uh, together with uh, Intel, uh, thanks to Marcel, Marcel Just ideas, they realize that uh, and they publish it. Of course, this was not on the news. Um, but today, if you look at the uh, BCI chapter uh, called Silent Talk in Wikipedia, this uh, refers, uh, links directly to the annual budget 2008 of DARP. This was the first time that we had like silent talk. Okay, this was the first time that there was a project about, uh, let's say an official project about uh, telepathy through technology. Uh, it, of course, it was sponsored by DARPA, but it was not so known. Um, but uh, if you look uh, on the DARPA annual budget, uh, we can find that uh, for million projects. And if we go to the, if we go to Wikipedia now, it's properly documented. Now, what what's happening? It's from this my point of view. Like it's is that uh, a lot of this research is financed by by the military. Uh, the 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 trick here is basically that, let's say there is some progress, uh, they cover with uh, military secrets. So the, the result of that uh, project is partially public. Let's say some results go will go public, but many results will not be published and will not be available for public domain. In this, in this um, way, we hyperbol hyperbolize uh, a growth that is quite uh, giving some space from the public domain uh, uh, knowledge acquisition. You, you see what I mean? So let's say I have a cool project. I got funding by, by the military. It's the best result of my, of my project is kept secret. I don't know for how long time. And uh, the rest, the, the little things are made public. As like basically uh, all the world work like this, then the interaction that I can have with you if you have an, another kind of project like that, is on the uninteresting stuff level. While at this, on the military things, they have like real good toys to play with and they can interact with each other with real good toys. That gives them like the chance to go a lot more far ahead than what we can do on the public domain. Anyway, this is the concept of, um, I bring here the concept of uh, um, 
technological supremacy, at some point the, the, the head of the pyramid will detach from the base. Anyway, let's go on. So we had the project Silent Talk that was there in 2008. Um, little, because I was thinking like uh, the director of DARPA again, uh, this time uh, the, the da director of DARPA was uh, uh, Regina Dagan. Let's just remember this name. Um, I said also that uh, the language approach, the language reading, the coding from the mind could have like two different approach. One is going di directly to, se to semantic as um, uh, Marcel just was doing. Another approach is uh, by the night that was implemented by the, for the first time by the Knight Lab and the Gallant Lab, Berkeley, uh, Google facility for uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the, the preferred one, let's say. Uh, they did a reconstruction from uh, perception. So when I think about Hammer, I just think about it. Uh, my brain activity is the same as if I heard the word Hammer. So, if I read the part of the brain that is up to perceptions, what I hear, then I can decode my internal talks, not from the semantic, but from the perception part. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot easier to do. And uh, yeah, so they, they made it. This is basically a, the brain, open to uh, three, six, yeah. And then they, the subject will look at some video and they can see where the activity is going on. Then again, the map, they map like uh, the video with the brain activity and the next time without uh, knowing what I'm looking at, they can say, they can know that I'm looking at a cat or a shoes. And they made a website, there was one of those uh, pupils that made a nice website uh, about uh, voxel and semantics. Voxel is basically the car. Here there is, a, there are, it's a point that has these semantics on going on. If I move the cursor here, then it will have different semantics. I, it's a really interesting website. Uh, I'll send the link if anybody is interested, it's public domain. Um, and finally, in 2013, uh, in Tokyo, they were able to do um, the coding from uh, dreaming. So what, what uh, we are uh, uh, dreaming uh, can be decoded and uh, renderized on a video clip. Uh, of course, like uh, the first version is really rough, uh, low, uh, low resolution. So we don't know, like, yes, I'm seeing a man, a woman. It's interesting that as, like, the awakening is coming, then the image got, like, more defined. Anyway. But yes, in the, with, some, with some years, this would be, like, uh, uh, we, we could map uh, dreams to a game, video game, let's say. So I will play inside your dream. Anyway, let's move on. DARPA Braingate. 2004, let's move back a bit because on one side we do the coding and we like to play with semantics. On the other stuff, they want to move things as well. They. So, um, BrainGate is a, is, a, is a company that was made up by DARPA and uh, university, Brown University and uh, in other cases from uh, Boston University. They are really odds in the sense they are doing really terrible stuff in the sense they are really super advanced stuff they want uh, uh, in, um, invasive connections with the brain so uh, one thing is to have an helmet another thing is to have something implanted into your brain that gives like uh, some advantage uh, on the battlefield because it's faster and it has a, at the moment is uh, where the higher is it, there is a bet where uh, we can um, decode things and uh, do uh, brain imaging and the bet is is, uh, for example, Elon Musk and DARPA, they won't go uh, with the invasive implants. Other people, they want to stay out of the brain and just to have an helmet or, or things. This is an invasive um, uh, prototype. It's a, it's a nice bet. Uh, the first uh, person that had it implanted, uh, this guy, Eric Ramsey, um, 
yeah, the an incident, uh, paraplegic, completely, like we are talking about people with no other choice than get, having, getting an help from the society to start to have a normal life again. Uh, in this case, the, the help, they are approached by a group of people uh, with big promises, like you will move things again, you will uh, speak again, uh, just sign here, or just, just like, just blink your eyes and uh, that will consider as a sign and you will be part of our research program. The problem is that uh, it's not a pure medical, the, the medical research program is, uh, is mainly um, a coverage for uh, a military research program. So what they want to achieve is uh, prosthetics. So, with the, so they became guinea pigs. And this is terrible from an ethical point of view, I think, because like the only things that you, I mean, it reminds me really of the carrot and uh, of the, of the, and and so what's happened is basically that, uh, for example, for this woman, uh, she wanted just to eat chocolate, uh, to be able to grab candies and to eat again. Uh, Two months before the program was finished, they just switched the old things. They said, OK, now you, with the same things, now you will try to pilot uh, uh, um, a flight. First a simple version and then an F-35 version. Um, she did. Um, and then they published. Uh, and then there was the 60, uh, there was a convention, military convention. In, uh, and they, they said, like, uh, even if they denied that this was like a prototype for a new uh, swarm drone uh, technology, you know, which one you can uh, uh, drive drones with your mind, um, then they um, uh, announced it to the military uh, happening at the 60th uh, F notes. Um, what's important here is that uh, it's interesting to know what, what's going on, where the money are coming from and uh, why. We are doing this. At that time, the president uh, that followed Regina Dagan was uh, Rati Prakbar, uh, interesting woman. Okay, let's go now to, like, we are moving like from uh, the basic uh, brain imaging, brain decoding to the applications. That, so driving an F-35, for example, moving cursor, cursor on the screen, in uh, 2004, NeuroSky was founded in Silicon Valley. Uh, the, the research behind it started in 1999 with other foundings. They made like uh, chips for uh, toys. So you could like look mom without hands effect. It was really a success. Uh, in 2007, interaction started. Um, I think this is the this is in quite interesting uh, as the concept. So um, this uh, woman that founded uh, Interaction first uh, in Canada, all these things are happening in the Nordic, like, uh, I mean, the, the not military part of BCI is happening a lot in the Nordic part of the globe. Canada, uh, Toronto, uh, Seattle, the borderline between uh, Canada and United States. Um, yeah, I haven't investigated Russia, but uh, here in, uh, for example, in, uh, in Germany, there are things uh, as well in, in the, the north side of uh, Europe. Muse is, uh, gives narrow feedbacks. So once we wear it, it's censoring our brain. And uh, if I'm relaxed, uh, it will give me, it will play relaxed music or let's say low music until I hear birds or things like that. Uh, it's an application that connects to the device and gives me an error feedback. So if I'm not relaxed, the music would be louder. And uh, it's a, I learn to meditate and I would say learn to meditate because uh, I, I don't, but I had like a, a, a confirmation of that I was doing something in the right direction when I was meditating tends to this because I've been like many meditation session and uh, to think about your breath, think about this, but actually I didn't know if I was like doing things well or not. Actually I was not probably. Thanks to neurofeedback we can actually see when your meditation is uh, having good effects on your brain. So if uh, 
the, the, the frequencies are going down and if you're making space in your mind or if the brain takes it all. Emotive 2001, uh, it's uh, this kind of, I don't have it with me. Um, it's um, again, it's set censoring. There is an application SDK for developers and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you read the uh, brain states and then you map them to controls, for example. This is really nice for the, the I mean, the, the way it, uh, not that model, but this model is really uh, good for the motor uh, cortex that is the part of the brain that is in charge for movements. So when I want to move a drone, for example, just an example, uh, I can use this uh, with a, and um, it will work out of the box because it's, it has been studied for that. Uh, this is a way like so to, uh, let's say, spread uh, uh, the technology for uh, controlling physical things uh, outside of the world. Uh, like for example, and the University of Florida in 2017, the, for, the first brain drone race. Uh, I found the connection thanks to this guy. So interesting initiative, quite toys, toys and uh, gaming things uh, together with the EDU, so uh, the, ed the educational academy part. Uh, the goal was like to move drones. And uh, I found that their mentor was really connected to DARPA. It was like inside in DARPA and blah, 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 blah. So it got basically the, 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 it was founded also by NSF and DARPA eventually. It's nice to dig into history. 2013, here comes the pirate. Open BCI, it's basically a open source electronic for uh, BCI censoring. Uh, it's a, it was a small company in New York in 2013. Today is still a company in New York, and they ship uh, BCI electronics uh, to all the world. And uh, and it's more like uh, uh, you can the the, the circuits are um, um, available. Uh, you can download the, the 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 schemas. You can modify them. Uh, you can do your own, starting from that. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so if you want to have a better version of this, you just work on their schema and you do a better version and uh, you publish because that's the way open source work. So you re-give. And um, yeah, I think it's a really nice uh, concept. Uh, it's uh, basically uh, BCI for all, finally, uh, out of uh, the corporation. I mean, it's really nice what corporations do. Uh, do. Uh, they make products, why not? Uh, I like to uh, be uh, uh, the owner of uh, the product of a corporation. So in this case with the open source uh, electronics, it's like then you own it. Then I can, I'm, I'm a partner with them. I'm not a customer, so I can... I can like do my version of it and uh, be smarter. If I'm smart in a in ideal world with, with a good ideas, I could do a lot of things. If I don't have the low constraints. What about the future? What's coming on? It's uh, probably telepathy. Okay, in uh, or October 13. Okay, so this was said by uh, Qualcomm, uh, the, C the CTO of Qualcomm, was it? So basically, if one, we had mobile phones, we had 1G, we had uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, the 6G, the 5G should, 5G is for your eyes, uh, 6G will be for the brain waves. So it's like we need, brain waves uh, occupy a lot of um, uh, brand width. So we need powerful networks in order to. There was uh, this was also the year in which when DARPA, after Barack Obama launched the Brain Initiative, that was like, uh, let's say, unveiled the Brain Initiative. That is basically a mix of public and private and military investments uh, into and uh, all together. Let's let's get all in. There are a lot of money, uh, governmental. I mean, uh, government uh, money, uh, United States, and we want to build something big. Let's achieve this. Let's reach this. The it's like it has been compared to the Manhattan Project. It has been compared to the Apollo uh, Project, not by me, by by the EBM uh, CEO, by other people. 
what I want to say is that at that time when that was happening, uh, they had a um, DARPA director, uh, Prakti, called uh, the, the, the CTO of IBM, uh, Qualcomm, Google, Microsoft, in, in a little small room, asking like, do we have the infrastructure for this? Of course, the answer was yes. A group was born. Um, yeah, they, they basically, they, they gather together to prototype this, this new brain internet, like uh, they, they are building it. Or let's say, I, I prefer to think that, uh, yeah, they, uh, there was a lot of experimenting things in the military since the 60s, and now they are quite ready to have deployment, uh, like internet, and uh, now they are looking for uh, what's the best way to do it. And also, yeah, they want to be sure that we use it the proper way. Now, um, yes. For the future, what's, uh, where are we going? So we, uh, we know all our fMRI. fMRI is this big machine that uh, detects where the blood activity is in our brain. And then, uh, so then it gives an image of our brain activity. But it can be the, uh, an image of our brain can be achieved um, in uh, other different ways. For example, with optogenetics, we modify the neurons uh, genetically in order to emit lights when they fire or reverse, that when they uh, got some lights, they, they, f they fire. Or when they fire them, it's like, yeah, both. Um, or mag magnetogenetics is the same thing, but uh, there's no need for uh, the wire cable. So basically, we, uh, we change our genetics of our neurons. It's not something that we would like to have, but uh, it can be done. Uh, so we, every time that a neuron uh, has an activity, it emits a certain frequency that can be detected for easily from, for example, a ca um, carbon cap. Then synchron this is another way they are looking into. Uh, it's like uh, it's the strand node. It's this uh, thing. We have to imagine like all in all our uh, blood wires, and it detects basically the the activity and the ones, of course, it's backed up by DARPA. Uh, when it detects, it's connected to something that stream wireless what's going on in our brain and uh, we have it on a computer or on a LAN. Open Water, I love those. I love this company. Um, they're really visionary and they are really, uh, and they are really making the difference uh, with results. Uh, with a different uh, mindset than uh, DARPA, I think. Um, so they use uh, ultrasonic scanning. Uh, the Mary, Ju uh, Mary Lou Japspen was uh, at Google, was an uh, was, um, important uh, uh, technical guru at Google, at Facebook. Then she said, like, they are going in the wrong direction. I will do my own company. So she started, she made open water. They promised to have like a really cheap and portable uh, brain scanning machine. In, uh, in, in, uh, in a near future. So if it's cheap, then uh, everybody can use it. Everybody can wear it. And but the problem is the interface. Uh, so there are three things, reading, decoding, mapping, and then do things with it. The reading part is a bit, we have like these helmets, these things, nobody wants to wear them. Uh, or yes, may maybe. But uh, that's not like the betting direction. So on the in, on the reading part, we are, there is a lot of uh, money invested to find different solutions. This is one really promising. Uh, a guy at the Media Lab just last year, two years ago already. Oh my God! Um, invented this prototype. So again, we are going through. This is uh, telepathy. Uh, through technology. So instead of reading the semantic, instead of reading the perception, I read the motor, uh, the, let's say, when my muscle uh, moves for saying a word, uh, that's a, an activity that can be recorded and decodified. When I also um, think about the word I'm saying, and uh, I kind of move, uh, it's like an intention of moving my tongues and my, my mouth in order to say that, that works as well. I don't have to, to, to speak in order to that to happen. So they made like this sensor 
and uh, it basically reads what you want to say. And then they have like these earphones that are connected instead of uh, being connected to, to the external part of the ear, they are directly into the bone. This is already a commercial product for for people, sport people, for example. Um, so you don't cover your ear, you keep uh, hearing like uh, the environmental part of it. And um, yes, and uh, what's happening is basically that um, you can hear like uh, so something without anybody hear, uh, hear it, but at the same time you hear the environment. So it's basically like, uh, yeah, you can talk with your AI personal assistant, nobody will recognize that, and you could have a fantastic chess game. Uh, Regina Dagan, 2008 was a uh, project silent talk. Uh, she was the director at DARPA in 2006, um, 15, she worked at Google at Project X. That was basically a secret, super secret research uh, project in Google. Nobody knows what uh, was the output of that. They work a lot with mobile phones. And um, in uh, 2017, she came out, well, she, um, she re revealed that she was the director at the Building 8 at Facebook, and they were uh, on uh, mind reading uh, technologies. So again, trillion of dollars, as uh, Mark Zuckerberg said. Um, this is the F8 conference. Um, it's a, a PR uh, conference for engineer uh, that to spot. The thing is that um, she, while she was a, a, a DARPA, she also set up the technological technology assessment uh, office that is an, a basic what is technology assessment uh, let's say yes we do technology transfer so we ship the new technology to the people uh, but we want that to be used the way we want is is a, a discipline that uh, come up with tools so you will use the things that I'm the technology in the way that I want you to use it 